Hello, this is Tharian's Flame. Welcome to my second Hasio tutorial. I know it's been a while since I recorded my first one. I tried several video recording um, software pieces after QuickTime began failing me. I finally settled on Screenium and bought it, and we'll see how well that works once this gets uploaded to YouTube. Anyway, now that you have the Haskell platform, we can begin learning the language itself. So, um, if you're on uh, Mac OS X, um, you should probably have the terminal in your dock already, I already do. Um, otherwise, go to Finder Applications, Utilities, Terminal, and just drag it to your dock. Um, and open up Terminal, and you should get that screen. Um, this is exactly the same thing you'd be doing on a Linux or um, Unix machine in the sense that you're just opening up a shell. You're just opening up a, a standard Unix or Linux shell. Um, I would prefer you to use Bash because that's what I'm using, but I mean, you can use whatever you want. Uh, any variant of the Born shell, the Corn shell, or the C shell should be perfectly fine as long as you know your way around your shell reasonably well. Um, so, invoke GHCI, type GHCI, press enter, and that should get you that. Now, if that doesn't do anything, um, if I can um, just for a moment, you might get this error. If that's so, GHCI isn't in your path, um, and you're going to have to go and find it and read up on how to add um, a piece of, or a, pro a program to your path. Um, uh, this shouldn't happen on OS X. This might happen on some versions of Linux, I'm not sure. If so, you're just going to have to go to slash uh, user slash local slash something or other. I think user local bin is where GHCI and GHC are located. Um, so I'm just going to restart terminal. Um, now my path is reset. So um, type GHCI as long as it's in your path. Uh, those of you on Windows won't be able to do this, won't just be able to open up command prompt and do the same. Um, instead, go to start menu, all programs, um, Haskell platform followed by a version number, or, uh, and then WinGHCI. Uh, open that up, and you will essentially get this in color. So now that we're all on the same page, um, let's try writing some very simple Haskell expressions. GHCI stands for the Glasgow Haskell Compiler Interactive Mode. Um, and it accepts a specific subset of Haskell in such a way that you can interact with it real-time. So I can type let a equal 1. Now GHCI knows that the variable a, variables in Haskell begin with a lowercase letter, uh, some variables anyway, begin with a lowercase letter um, and can be any alphanumeric character string after that. So let a equals 1. Um, a, we can, um, Haskell is a typed language, it's a strongly typed language, so we can ask, um, GHCI, colon, type, space, what the type of A is. It's an integer. Um, this means A is of type integer. And you can actually write this in your code. Uh, you won't be able to write this in GHCI because it's, a, it's not part of the accepted subset, but um, in full Haskell code this is called a type declaration and this is the main way that types are used. It's pretty much the only way types are used unless you get into uh, type level guru stuff and and uh, type level programming, and I don't really want to get into that with you until you're true uh, Haskell gurus yet, if ever. So, 
Um, that's type. You can GHCI is a little kind on your fingers because you can just abbreviate type as T. Um, you can also type info, or for short, just colon I, and it'll give you as much information as you want. So it'll line five. Uh, sorry, not not line five. Uh, line zero, column five of interactive mode um, is where A is defined, and A is defined as an integer. And that's all the information you can get about it right now, other than its value, which you can get by just typing its name and pressing enter. Now, um, obviously, that doesn't make a good language if that's all you can do. So Haskell provides some standard numeric operations as well, and numbers are by no means the only type you can declare. I'm just using them as an example here. So I can say 1 plus 2, and I got 3. I can say 5 plus 3 times 7 divided by 6, uh, and I get 8.5. Uh, now, what's cool about the type or T command to GHCI, among other things, is that it will um, sorry, it will um, accept full expressions as well. So T1 plus 2, and we get something else. Um, this is a type class context. This says that for any type A that might be treated as a number, this can be that type. Oh, well, I accidentally just copied and pasted, but um, whatever. So, as you can see, uh, this is actually v valid as an expression in the sense that um, I have an expression with a type declaration, and that just reduces to the expression constrained to be whatever type I've put on this side. Um, I'll talk to you more about that later, um, and I've gotten three out of it as expected. Um, there's one last thing about GHCI before we go, um, and I can talk to, and learn more. Um, you can use let with pretty much anything, so you can say let my var 1 equal uh, 54 plus 9.8 times 3, and you can type my var 1, 83.4 Haskell, and therefore GHCI is case sensitive. Uh, also keep in mind that you don't have to write them perfectly concatenated, they can be, um, you can have spaces, you can have as much space as you want, actually. Um, it can be uneven, uh, parentheses, it, it does follow ordinary order of operations, so just look in your third grade math textbook, that's perfectly fine. Um, and parentheses are used for grouping as usual. Um, that's it for now. In the next tutorial, I'll teach you how to make functions, and we can get really started. Um, so see you. In order to exit GHCI, type quit, or just Q for short, and then you can just quit your terminal. Thank you, and see you next time.